Hello friends, my name is Aaron Prosser and I'm the rector here at St. Peter's Anglican Church in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for joining me for just a few minutes as we continue our journey through the Gospel of Matthew. Today we'll be finishing up chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. In just a moment I'll read it to you, but I invite you to pause the video and read it yourself or to go to the link in the YouTube field which will take you to Bible Gateway where you can have it read to you in whatever translation you're used to using or in any number of other translations. Let's begin. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John, that is John the Baptist, to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So much has been said about the baptism of Jesus. So much can be said. It's a massive moment theologically. It's a massive moment looking back into the prophecies of the Old Testament as to who and what the Messiah would be. But I'd like to spend just a moment here touching on two important points. The first is I'd like us to see that both John the Baptist and Jesus know who the other is and that there is no confusion here. It's become popular in the years past to say, or rather in the last couple of decades, to say, well, you know, Jesus was just a wonderful lay rabbi. He said many good things, but he got caught up in a situation he didn't understand and couldn't control. And yet we see here that both John knew who Jesus was and Jesus knew who Jesus was. Look, John would have prevented him when Jesus came, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? It wasn't because Jesus hadn't paid his ticket or hadn't done something correctly. Jesus had no need of repenting because that's what John's baptism was about. And if, that, if you're not quite sure what repenting is, go back a few videos and we talk about it. Jesus didn't need what John was offering. He was the one person who could come to the baptism and not need it because Jesus is like us in every way except sin. He came, that's what the nativity is about, that's what we celebrate at Christmas. He came to live as one of us, to do what only he could do, dying as one of us, rising again because he was us, completely and fully except for sin. And John recognizes that this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this, John recognizes that and says, you don't need to be here. I need to be baptized by you. He recognizes that Jesus is something greater than him. His ministry is something greater. But yet Jesus says to him, let it be so now. Do this, John, for it's fitting to fulfill all righteousness. This is part of God's plan. This is part of what is good. This is part of what has been told for the Messiah. We need to go forward with this. And so John relented and baptized him. And should we have any doubts that they've messed up this whole situation? The heavens were opened, it says, and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and came to rest on Jesus. And behold, a voice from heaven, the voice, we might say, from heaven, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. There's no uncertainty in this moment. There's no questions in this moment. This is what was supposed to be done. Even though Jesus didn't need this baptism, this is what needed to be done. This was part of God's plan. And so the question for us, friends, is are we willing to accept this? Not just the baptism, are we willing to accept who Jesus says he is? Because either he's a lay, not lay Messiah, he is a lay rabbi who says some wonderful things, for he is who he says he is. He is the Messiah. He is the one who has come to bring reconciliation between God and his creation. You can't have both. He is who he says he is, or he is not. And from this point forward, nothing is going to make sense unless we come face to face with that. Jesus himself is going to make no sense 
unless we are willing to accept that as John was this morning, as John recognized who Jesus was this morning. Unless we hear the voice, unless we see the dove and say, yes, I will accept that. I challenge you to spend a few moments and to ask yourself, who is this Jesus? Who do I believe this Jesus to be? Who am I willing to accept him as? Because the answer to that question, friends, is going to determine what you hear of all the rest that he says and does. If it's hard to accept him as he says he is, ask him for his help. If it's hard to accept him as he is, ask him to reveal to you why it is. Because he's still doing the ministry that he came to do. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me here. Again, we could spend the rest of the day talking about the baptism, but I'd, I'd love just to, just to let these two things ruminate with us as we begin to enter in then to chapter 4 and the public ministry of Jesus. And we talk more and more about who he was, what he said, and what he did for us. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Until then, be well and be blessed.